the meeting of the uh, City of Maplewood Community Design Review Board for November 19th, 2019. Uh, we have uh, uh, members uh, uh, Shankar here and um, members Thompson absent are members Lamers and members Kempe. So uh, we do have a quorum tonight, so we'll proceed. Um, we have an agenda. Do I have a motion for approval of the agenda? I'll move the agenda. One second. Uh, for discussion's sake, is there anything you'd like to add, um, Mike, or no? Chair, uh, Chair and board, staff does not have any uh, okay. amendments to the agenda. Uh, all those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Okay, uh, the first item on the agenda is the approval of the minutes for October 15th, 2019. Um, I guess I didn't see anything, I wasn't present. Uh, is there a motion? I'll move the minutes. All second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Uh, and I'm going to abstain, so the motion passes. Um, then we have um, new business this evening. We have a design review for uh, a new um, building at 20, uh, 223 Larpenter Avenue East, and that's uh, uh, proposed by Tumblefresh. So, uh, staff report. Chair and board, thank you. Uh, I'll have slides now up on your screen that will just uh, walk through the brief presentation. I'll go through to outline the report. Uh, as the chair mentioned, we're looking at 223 Larpenter Avenue, a proposed new Tumblefresh uh, use. The new building would be uh, just over 4,700 square feet. Uh, again, this new building would be the home of Tumblefresh, which is a coin laundry uh, business. Laundry is a permitted use uh, for the zoning of this site. Um, the zoning of the site as, as business commercial is guided by the 2040 comprehensive plan as mixed use community. Uh, it is before you tonight because to move forward, uh, the applicant needs approval of design review. Uh, this project does not need to go to city council unless there's approval or uh, an appeal of the, any decision that is made tonight. Uh, the site layout as proposed and uh, these drawings were included with your packet that was mailed out to you last week. The applicant's initial site plan proposed two access points, one off Larpenter and one off Adolphus. Uh, because Larpenter Avenue is a county road, the county has the ability to review uh, and grant and take away access uh, when there's a land use change. And under Ramsey County's review of this pro uh, project, uh, they are denying the applicant the access point off Larpenter Avenue. Uh, so even though there is an existing access drive, the applicant cannot continue with that and will be required to uh, restore the curb and return it uh, to the condition of no access. Uh, the applicant has uh, stated they are okay with this and can move forward and working with staff now on revising that site plan. Uh, because of this, they are still seeking a sex second access drive off Adolphus now uh, while they will continue to uh, maintain the shared access uh, on the north side of the site uh, that is shared with the restaurant to the north. Uh, they are looking for a, a second access uh, point to be added south on Adolphus. Uh, and that will be a continued discussion with staff because we want to make sure that the uh, additional access point is uh, set back far enough from Larpenter and potentially could line up with uh, the drive accessing the townhomes to the to west. So the engineering staff at this point has indicated uh, they're open and uh, favorable of a second access point being added. Uh, just need to work through those details with the applicant. Michael, quick question while we're on this. So the picture we're seeing here is incorrect. Chair and board, that's the, that's the site plan that's been submitted and that's what's included with your staff report. Okay. Um, so as part of the conditions that staff is recommending, uh, the applicant will be required to come back to the city with a revised site plan that staff would review and approve before any uh, building permits are okay. approved. Thank you. Uh, moving towards, oh, excuse me, uh, a couple more points on the site layout. The building uh, is required to be set back 30 feet. Uh, it's kind of a unique site where there's three uh, front frontages to the site where the highway 35E to the east counts as a front yard uh, for the building and the site. So with that, Larpenter and Adolphus, the building is required to be set back 30 feet from the east, west, and south property lines. All those setbacks are being met. Uh, there is no setback to the north for a building, though there's not an issue as the building is well set back anyway. 
uh, the parking lot is required to be set back 15 feet from those same east, west, and south property lines that as well as being met. Parking lots are required to be set back five feet to the north. So outside of that shared access drive accessing the site, uh, the parking lot is also meeting that north um, setback requirement. And then one additional point to the site plan, the applicant uh, it will be adding a, a sidewalk section along Larpenter Avenue uh, in front of their parcel. From an architectural standpoint, uh, the building will be constructed with a mix of materials, including several brick colors, simulated stone, ephus, and glass. Uh, as noted in the staff report, staff finds the building attractively, attractively designed uh, and um, will be the building itself will be a, an, a favorable addition to the neighborhood. Uh, landscaping, there are no tree replacement requirements as there are no existing trees on the site. Uh, the applicant is proposing 18 new trees. Uh, with numerous shrubs, grasses, perennials to be planted throughout the site. Uh, the vast amount of the proposed landscaping will be on that west side uh, of the building and site, which will help provide a visual barrier uh, between that new building and the existing town townhomes to the west. Uh, last slide on this project, uh, just kind of some uh, odds and ends rounding out the, the review here. The, the site is required to provide 24 parking spaces based on the building size. The applicant is proposing 36 spaces uh, the photometric plan that was submitted does meet city requirements signage must meet city requirements the board does not review signage here uh, that gets done at the sign permit level but i just wanted to point out because there is a couple uh, uh, references to signs within the plans that uh, would not necessarily meet city requirements and the applicant ha that has been pointed out to the design team uh, for the applicant and so there is an expectation that uh, they know that coming forward that they would have to meet those uh, minimum sign requirements. And lastly, this is uh, uh, based on a question I received from a board member uh, after they reviewed the, the project. Uh, the proposed filtration basins uh, in terms of stormwater do include um, permeable liner to ensure stormwater runoff is not reaching contaminated soils. The previous use of this site was a, a Sinclair gas station. Uh, so the applicant has been uh, with their geotechnical consultant working with the MC MPCA and developing these plans uh, based on uh, their requirements. The applicant can perhaps provide more uh, insight to that, uh, but I did just want to provide that background to the full board tonight. With that, staff is recommending approval of the design plans that are before you. Uh, your recommendation begins on page one of the staff report and does go over to page two. Uh, the applicant, as I mentioned, is here and can address the board and staff can also stand for any questions. Uh, questions for staff. Um, Mike, do you know the history with um, the soil piles that are on the site? Um, obviously, there's, uh, they don't come from the site because it's, you know, everything is high there. Um, what, do you know what the status of, the, of those piles is? Sure. Chair and board, it's a situation where the existing property owner, which is not the applicant that's here tonight, so the existing property owner happens to be in a situation where he owns uh, two sites on the St. Paul side, but on either side of 35E. So he kind of controls three of uh, the sites on the intersection and he simply just moved the dirt in um, without city approval with the intention of, he had a, a different idea of maybe a project that could occur on this site, uh, but that's the dirt is not related to this project. So that will be uh, rectified as part of part of this site and it's just mainly there for storage and it's been a kind of it's, it has been an enforcement issue that the city has been working through and uh, trying to encourage the, the applicants or not the applicant but the property owner to deal with that soil okay. uh, and just a note there's a, there is a debris in that soil so sure. I don't I don't know that it's a uncontrolled fill or unregulated fill so I guess it you know I think the uh, as it relates to that uh, it should be tracked sure <clears throat> and I don't know if that fill is contaminated itself but okay. uh, I saw cinder blocks and rebar and different things like that sure. in the in the in the fill so um, you know we should keep track of that in terms yep. of uh, make, making sure that it's properly managed and those uh, solid wastes aren't disposed illegally yep duly noted thank you uh, so it's a staff, or I'm sorry, uh, the applicant is here this evening. If uh, you would uh, come to address the board here and uh, make a presentation of your your project, we'd appreciate that. 
Sure. Thank you, Chair and, and board members. My name is Stephen Lynn. I'm the Chief Executive Officer of the Lynn Companies, and Tumble Fresh Coin Laundry is one of our brands. Um, so as Michael said, um, we have proposed to do the, our uh, Tumble Fresh Coin Laundry on this site. Um, first, probably to, to address the, um, the dirt on the site. Certainly we're aware of that. We talked to the seller about that. Um, we have contracted with Terracon Engineering. Terracon uh, has done the geotechnical testing for us. They've done environmental testing for us. Um, they've been working through this process with us. It was RJ Ryan Company, not contracted by us, um, but by Richard Idle that brought in that dirt. And, uh, uh, but, and he had a plan there to level out that lot and put in a retaining wall and a number of things and obviously didn't even have full approval to do that. But, but that'll all be graded out. Um, we're actually, as part of our plan and in the engineering drawings, the, the slope down the hill down to the Crooked Pint will be will be actually, uh, we have a, a construction easement to go onto the Crooked Pint property and gradually build up that grade from there. And we'll be improving their drainage as part of that deal and uh, as well as dealing with our own drainage and our own ponding and, and those kind of things. Um, it is true the site um, was a former Sinclair site and certainly uh, with that comes a level of contamination. This site had MPC or does have MPC a site closure. Uh, that does not mean by any stretch that a site is not contaminated. It just means there's no further action at that time uh, when you have site closure and we are working and have made all the appropriate applications to the MPCA um, to deal with the contamination and they'll be involved with Terracon engineering uh, in terms of uh, dealing with and cleaning up contamination as it's discovered and making sure that it doesn't get into the to the new um, retention ponds and those things that are that are built the 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 design is to have a vapor barrier under the floor of the laundromat which allows um, the any remaining um, vapors to go up through the building and be vented through the roof as well as the ponds have uh, a liner in them that uh, is a design to make sure that none of the contamination reaches the water table. So all of that's being dealt with. Um, our tumble fresh, this, this would be, uh, well, assuming when this is built, we have four sites uh, currently in process. We have six locations up and running. Um, they're very uh, well done, luxurious laundry mats. Even though the name has coin in it, the reason it does is to make sure the consumer understands that it's you know, a self-serve coin-operated type laundromat and not a dry cleaner or something of that nature. Um, but the reality is um, better than 50% of our customers use credit card. You can use credit card, you can pay by app. Um, there's all kinds of technology involved. It's not just coin, <laughs> but um, I, I do have my architect here tonight. We have, uh, he has sample boards of the materials that we use. Um, I think you'll find that, you know, what we do as an organization, it, you know, meets and exceeds uh, all the city standards in terms of materials and landscaping. Uh, we are, we are very good at running quality facilities, and we own and operate everything that we that we do. We don't lease facilities. We uh, and we're we're very big on maintaining those properties. Um, our company happens to.
be the one that developed the Starbucks right next door here. Um, we have the Holiday Station in town up on English Street. Um, so we, we do have some familiarity with the city of Maplewood as well. Is this a 24-hour operation? It is not. Uh, it's, it's very automated. The, the doors lock and unlock by themselves, but they unlock at 5 a.m. and they lock at 1 a.m. There's automated messages that play uh, to notify the customers that the store will be closing, to, to uh, you know, start telling them that uh, you know, last load is to start at a certain time, and, uh, and then it, the message changes and tells them the, you know, the store is closing in an hour, and a half an hour, and whatever. You must exit now, alarm will, will be activated, all those kind of things. And, uh, so, uh, but primarily the reason we are not 24 hours, uh, first of all, after 1 a.m., not a, you know, there's just not a lot of activity and a lot, not a lot of good things happen at that time of night. But it's primarily to make sure that we do filter people out. We don't want people living in the facility or uh, staying there beyond a certain time so it 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 really forces them out of the building is what happens so that homeless people and others can't make it a, a place to stay uh, before we uh, hear from the architect uh, does anyone else have any more questions for mr. Lynn no. um, I have a couple uh, just following up on <clears throat> on the um, uh, the situation with the history of the site. Um, so, um, is there a remedial action plan that <clears throat> that has been approved by the MPCA for for the development? <clears throat> That's part of the development. The application has been submitted to the MPCA for that. So it's it's called a DRAP or a, uh, right, and that has been submitted. Um, so. Um, has that officially been approved by them yet? No, I believe they have. It, it was only recently submitted, um, and they have, I think, 30 days or whatever. And then, um, but it's not a matter of approval or not approval. It's it's just that action plan is laid out, but okay. all the proper paperwork has been filed. Will, uh, will there be a restrictive cover covenant on the deed? Yes. Okay. There, there are restrictive covenants that came with the property now that, that are there. Yeah, they were, <clears throat> they were okay. both put there from Sinclair as well as from the seller, Richard Idle. Uh, okay. So Sinclair has uh, deed restrictions against any further gasoline. And uh, Richard Idle put some restrictions on there because he also owns the retail center on the other side of the highway. And he restricted some of the uses, so it's non-competing. Um, when do you anticipate you'll have? We probably, probably don't know, but the approval of the DRAP, how development response action plan? Um, I would have to ask Terracon exactly, but it, it shouldn't be more than a matter of weeks. I mean, we we should have it soon. Okay. And what is your planned construction for this? The planned construction is spring. Okay. So that shouldn't be a yeah. uh, problem. Okay. No. Um, let's see. Uh, so in, in my experience with uh, contaminated sites and closed sites for that matter, um, as you alluded to, um, uh, when you start developing a property, you find things that uh, that you didn't know were there. I mean, you, you might run across another tank. I mean, I don't know if they did... Uh, ground penetrating radar to identify, you know, other, if there's other things there, but um, it's important, uh, and I'm going to offer this as a condition when we discuss this, um, that, that uh, you know, in the event that you do find things that are not described, previously described in site investigations, uh, one of the conditions that I'll propose is that um, that you need to contact the city and the MPCA to 
uh, to make them aware of those conditions, environmental conditions, and that'll be a that'll be a, a, a thing that that that'll be into a condition of your DRAP as well, you know, DRAP approval. So I guess right. it's nothing shocking, but I do I do want to make sure that uh, you know uh, if that should occur, and I've seen 50% of my sites, uh, you know, actually do have things beyond what's been you know known and so it happens quite often so yeah no I, I agree with you I, I've personally developed over 50 sites in my life and uh, probably 15 of those have been contaminated in X gas sites um, and, and you're absolutely right we depending on how old the site is or what you know when buildings were on it we often run into old footings or whatever we did do geotechnical studies and as you I'm sure know that 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 can only that's only as good as where the probe went in the ground, um, but that does give us some indication of what's there. Um, but we also so Terracon <coughs> uh, not only does the geotechnical studies for us, but they will be hired for construction testing throughout the whole process. So. Uh, all the dirts brought in will have to be compactable. You know, everything has to meet uh, engineering standards. And, um, and as well as, uh, so Terracon has, you know, both the geotechnical and the environmental side, but the environmental people test everything coming and going. And, uh, and yeah, you're absolutely right. Anything they find as part of the DRAP has to be automatically reported anyway. So that's, that's just standard uh, practice of, of what we do and what n should and needs to be done. Well, I appreciate that, uh, you know, you've got the experience with contaminated sites and I, you know, from what we've talked about here, you, you understand exactly what the concerns are and what the city's concern. I mean, if we, if we didn't have these things, um, um, you know, some assurances of this then, um, and an inexperienced developer, we could have a mess. So I don't want that, and I don't think that will occur. But uh, at any rate, thank you very much. So, yeah, uh, and I do, uh, uh, we just recently did a tumble fresh in Blaine on University Avenue. That was an ex gas site. It was very contaminated. We bought the property from the city of Blaine uh, and worked through that whole process. There was debris in the ground. Uh, there was all kinds of things, and, and I, I would ask that if you have any concerns, you reach out to the city for a reference because they'll tell you that the process went very well and we're up and running, and it's and it's been great. Very good, thank you. Uh, thank you. So, if we could uh, hear from the architect, and if you could just uh, present the building and the materials, uh, we'd appreciate that. Please state your name for the record. Uh, so my name is Elliot Stendhal. I'm with Architectural Consortium. And, um, you know, I think in your packets, I, th I think there was a series of photos of the exterior and the interior. Is that, is that correct, that you've seen some of those? Uh, um, what we got you just were, seen the, the colored elevation. I think we got the, the elevations. I don't know if there were. Um, we, we, had, we did receive floor plans and that kind of thing, but. Yeah. Well, uh, we've, I've got a copy of those with, if people want to take a look at them. Uh, yeah, we can actual um, Mike put those up before, so I think that's fine. I think we've, we've uh, we did see them, so thank you. Um, so really, the, uh, those are photos from two of the locations that were just completed last year in Blaine, uh, which Steve had mentioned, and also Hudson. And this store location is heavily based off that. There's been some slight adjustments, but not anything you would notice in terms of the elevations, uh, the same massing and piers and aesthetics of the building have been maintained. Um, and again, the, the larger sample down below me is you know, the actual sample, sample of the stone. This is more the effect of it. Uh, but on the building, we've got three brick colors that are dispersed to kind of give some interest. Those are primarily used as a, a base condition to help break up the mass, uh, and it appears, and you know, brick is a more durable material, so it's also beneficial in that sense. Um, <clears throat> with the energy code development uh, that's getting stricter and stricter, 
We are using EFIS on the facade and the upper portions because we also get insulation benefit from that. Um, but uh, there's also continuous insulation behind the brick uh, and the actual stone as well to kind of make it a very efficient building. Um, and those are the two materials you see up here. Uh, there's also then a series of metal that occur in the building and the storefront. Um, and then we have a sample of the awnings that are actually used, which are kind of uncharacteristic. We see a lot of solid use the time here. This is kind of a, a design aspect that's unique to Tumble Fresh and gives it some character and interest. Uh, and then this last material on the bottom is the material that we clad the uh, trash enclosure with. Uh, so you can see how it complements the pallet of materials um, for, for what gets used. Okay. So, aside from that, I don't know if there's any questions. Um, I did have a question. I, I was looking at the, um, the east elevation, and that's, I guess, facing um, 35. Mm -hmm. And uh, <coughs> the center section there has uh, banding. And I, and I'm wondering about that um, with the brick, um, the banding of the brick. And I'm, if you had a specific rationale for that. Um. Yeah, no, it's it's really just to do something different on that facade to give it a little more interest, and that creates a focal point in the middle uh, of that larger mass of the building where you have kind of just a blank area on either side of it. Um, and uh, that in turn is kind of accented in terms with the signage that's above it. That's, that's really the only basis behind it. Okay. Um, and, I, and I understand when, you, when you've got a real, you know, a very large building um, that that's important. Um, and I think we're looking at about 89 feet on the length of that elevation. So, you know, it's less of a concern for me. And, um, and I don't know. I, I don't, I don't. I don't know if I aesthetically uh, care for it, but we'll talk about that a little bit. Um, um, other than that, other questions for the architect? No. What's the base? There's some base which is a dark <coughs> brown, and uh, is it all brick? Yeah, everything basically up to the blue of the lines, <coughs> and below that is is brick. So the base is this dark color that you see that I'm pointing to here. Um, and then between the windows is more of this middle tone. And then the actual brick piers and bases is the, is the lightest tone of the brick color. So is there any reason why the, the height of the dark brick does not match the height of the light brick? Um, in which, well, on the west facade, you're right, it is, there's an eight inch kind of recess in the dark brick where the storefront is at, and that's uh, really what's starting that relationship. There's also a vertical soldier course that's course, happening yeah. that, again, is just a brick detailing uh, that, that creates some interest where that lower portion is timing out with that. Yes, there would be two uh, roof top units that are used to heat and cool the building, uh, as well as uh, a series, I think there's two air intake vents that are really just a flat kind of vent that allows air to go in, and those are relatively low. Uh, there are, uh, are some exhaust fans that are on the roof too for like the toilet room, um, and all of that stuff uh, is relatively screened by the height of the parapet, given the view lines uh, of the building. Um, so we've, in, 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 in addition with how those, that equipment is actually located on the roof, so it's much more centralized. So those two aspects really help us to screen it uh, from, from any possible view from, from the local uh, public way. Elliot, can you tell me how the, <coughs> the words are illuminated? The lit from behind or is there lightning that's coming? On the signs? Yeah. Yeah, um, I've got more detail, but uh, the, the typical signs that you see, the logo, Tumble Fresh and the coin laundry portion, 
are a typical channel letter, so that's a non-illuminated part, and then they're in internally illuminated with LEDs through you know, okay. a translucent face that, that lights up uh, at night. And then the blue banding on top lights right. up as and well? and that's okay. very, if you're familiar with the holiday gas stations, that's a very similar effect that they have. It's obviously not being used everywhere in the building. Yeah. Here, again, it's trying to be used at key elements in the building to accentuate the signage. Um, and again, create some identity and interest to the. And building. will that be on the east side as well? It is. It's yeah. on. It's on all <coughs> four sides right now. Uh, typically on the west, oh, the south, okay. and the north, it's at the the curve upper portion uh, of that middle area, and then on the east, it is in the curved portion when you have a color change in the EFIS colors just above the signs. All right, thank you very much. Sure. Um, so I guess uh, as far as the board discussion goes here, I, I don't know, for, for my, my opinion, I think the banding um, on, the, on the east elevation is, that's just a little busy to me. It just, and I, I would prefer that center section to match the uh, other two sections but I, I could be convinced otherwise I, I don't know actually I might offer another option yes I agree that the banding is distracting what if this that section was a darker brick fully the full uh, panel yeah I like that idea um. Elliot any comment on that from you architecturally Yeah, I mean, in, in the grand scheme of things, that banding in that specific spot is a new element. It was not at the former locations that were created last year. It had just a solid band, kind of like the adjacent sides, just a darker band at the bottom, and then the same uniform tone above. And um, as I explained before, we thought by adding that banding, it was a way to kind of kick the, the interest level up on that facade. Um, for what was otherwise a little bit plain, in, in part to try to grab people's attention um, as they're coming up uh, off the on-ramp or off-ramp from uh, 94. Right. So I guess uh, I guess we're thinking that it, it uh, the, the darker brown brick would be appropriate. Um, I think the building has a lot of interest. I mean, it's very well designed. First of all, I like I like to compliment you on that. I, I uh, uh, you know, the pilasters on the corners um, create interest. There's there's other banding, um, the coping on the top, um, and uh, you know, you're really you're really setting your sign up. You know, very well. I mean, it, it, it it's architecturally framed just just right. It's just um, um, I, I just think it's a, a little overdone in terms of the banding. So, um, and I think that's that might be a a, a majority opinion here too. So, um, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't know if it really makes a difference from your standpoint, one way or the other. Um, so I don't think it's. <laughs> no, I think, yes, yeah, it was a matter of a sign ban, you know, having a, having a, yeah. but, no, I, it's less money for us not to put it. <laughs> Thank so, you. Um, Is there further discussion? Is there a motion? You had a, another uh, thing you wanted to put in the. Well, I can do that. Uh, I can make an amendment if we we'll get this thing going. Okay, I'll make a motion then. I'll make a motion to approve the design plans, date stamped October 31, 2019, for a 4,770 square foot commercial building. Located at 223 at Lapinter Avenue East, approval is subject to the applicant doing the following. Numbers one through six on page one. Numbers seven through 11 on page two. 
And then I will add a number, I'll add a number 12, which shall state that the, on the east elevation, the center panel below the signage, the entire panel shall be of the dark brown brick color. As opposed to the banding. As opposed to the banding, yes. Just to help clarify. Yes. And, and just to clarify, so you're envisioning the whole center section, the dark brown as opposed to just matching the base condition, which is on either side, yeah, that's right. the lower portion? There, there would be no base there. The whole thing would be the brown. Okay, is there a second? I'll second that. Okay, uh, so I have a question for uh, staff. Uh, or discussion here. Uh, did we cover in, and I, I don't see it here, uh, did we say, here it is, uh, trash enclosure shall be provided, you know, 100% opaque, but did we say that the materials should uh, have, uh, or the materials of the trash enclosure be <coughs> matching the building? I know we saw it here. Um, Chairing board, it's not explicit in the okay. requirements. So the I, I guess I would like that, to. Okay, yeah. thank you. Yeah. I'd like to uh, make an amendment that um, for number eight that we add uh, that the uh, materials for the trash uh, container enclosures uh, match the design of the building as proposed uh, by the applicant this evening, um, and we did see that. Uh, so that would be modifying eight just to clean that up a little bit, adding uh, a. Condition 13 related to um, the existing contamination, and I and I went back and forth with staff a little bit on this, and and um, um, I would like a, a, an additional uh, condition to read that the applicant shall contact the MPCA and the city if any contamination beyond what is currently defined is encountered during the site work, and I'll clarify that a little bit. Um, what I mean is that if contamination, uh, additional uh, contaminant parameters are identified, the magnitude of contaminants, the vertical and the aerial extent of contaminants. So that's what I mean by uh, currently defined. So any further discussion? No. If I could on that, who, who specifically do we notify on that? Uh, you would, Mike, would you? Uh, chairing board, yeah, I would have them contact me as a starting point. Right. Or you could contact the, contact the building department also. Um, that would be, but we, we have our um, planner. Our planner, yes. yes. Okay. So, uh, any further discussion? I'll call the question. All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. Ayes all. Good luck with the project. Thank you very much. That's a very nice building. And we're happy to have nice you. Nice improvement to that corner. Yes. That's for sure. Yeah, that's great. Okay. Uh, the next item is the uh, 2019 Community Design Review Board Annual Report. Staff report, please. Chair and Board, yes, thank you. So even though we're still in somewhat the middle of November, we're, we're looking at uh, our annual report for the CDRB for 2019. Uh, I did note, uh, as I was thinking before we got to this item tonight, uh, you did look at this and officially approve it uh, at, one, at either your January or February meeting of uh, this year, uh, but it was already in its book form. So if you had changes, it was too late. Uh, so our idea was, at least this year, like we did in year one of this new format, uh, to get it to you uh, now. So if you do have suggestions and corporations, so it's truly your annual report, uh, being given to the council, uh, we're able to still make those uh, edits and additions uh, as you see fit. Uh, I do want to note, uh, you probably looked at it, and there's a couple points that are uh, within the, the two-page spread there that aren't complete yet. Uh, most like those pull-out bubbles with the square footage that have been approved by the CDRB as we're still compiling that uh, data. And the overall uh, layout and design of the, the two-page spread that you see is consistent with the last two years. Uh, and so we're, staff is asking to reserve the right to potentially um, massage that design overall as we look to kind of 
uh, re repurpose it a little bit in this third year, but the content will stay consistent with what you see tonight uh, with any changes. So just in summary, uh, we tried to provide more of a narrative uh, to the past year's actions uh, at, on the first page, uh, looking for some themes. Uh, there's a summary of all the projects uh, that you did review this year, including the Tumble Fresh project you just reviewed uh, tonight. Uh, I, I know I mentioned to the board before the meeting started, we don't have any applications at this point uh, online that would require you to have a December meeting, and this is the week that they would be required or to be due. So it's looking like there won't be any additional projects, but say there are, uh, we'll definitely incorporate that into this report as well. Uh, the second page uh, looks ahead to some uh, ideas or thoughts that we feel that the board will be uh, looking to work on, including notably uh, Independent School District 622's continued investments in their facilities. And we know that there's going to be two significant projects being brought to the board for review uh, in the next year. Uh, but this would also be an, uh, a great opportunity for if there's things that the, the three members here tonight would like to have uh, incorporated into the report. I will ask after, even though we're not a full, full slate tonight of members to grab a quick photo of the, the guys that did show up uh, so we can have a more up-to-date uh, photo. If there happens to be a chance where we get more members, we'll take another one. But I at least want to uh, remember this moment with you with you three uh, gentlemen uh, that are here. So with that, uh, pretty straightforward, I think, but I, I do want to emphasize it is your, uh, your annual report to the council. Uh, so if you have can, uh, feedback or things you'd like to see incorporated, uh, I, I'd really like to hear that tonight. So with that, I'll hand it back to the board. The Carver Elementary School photo is a great one, I think, to add because that's a huge interest to the neighborhood. Yeah, that it's was a, good a choice, sir. very significant project for sure. Short and sweet. I like it. Yes. yes. Would you like a motion? I would. So, okay. yeah, if you're comfortable with it, I would uh, prefer that you have the motion uh, signifying approval of this uh, and report as presented. Do you have any other suggestions? Can we still email it to you? Yeah, uh, as you know, if they're very substantial, like the board did nothing this year or anything like that, you know, I'd want uh, buy-in from the entire board. But if they're kind of minor edits or we overlook sure. this aspect of it, yes, please let me know. Like, I mean, I like Carver uh, photo in the back, but I don't know about this one with the, all the fire station elevations. I'm thinking maybe a, a site plan with some plantings or something might be better. Sure, sure. Yep, open to uh, suggestions there. That, that, would, that we can definitely make that uh, change for you. So, and what I what I would commit to before we send it off uh, to be printed, I'll, I'll send the board uh, the email, just a, a proof copy of where we ultimately landed with design and colors and changing out uh, a graphic like uh, board member Shankar suggested. So you you will get to see the final, final version, uh, and then if you catch a typo here or there, you can let me know. But you don't need pictures of all five, huh? I would prefer it, but, you know, you kind of take what you get uh, as far as who shows up. So, <clears throat> Michael, just a quick spelling. Yes. On that um, first page, right below the picture, uh, the very last line, building which... Oh, we'll be sure. Built. Appreciate that. So yeah, we will we will address that. And if it provides any level of comfort, because this is part of a, a larger document, we have about that's what I figured. Yeah, yeah seven people review it because I, I I lay awake at Somebody night worried about thought. that. Yeah, but no, definitely appreciate it. Okay. So thank you. All right, I will move uh, recommendation or approval of the Community Design Review Board 2019 annual report. In its, is this a draft form? Yeah. Yeah, in its draft form. I'll second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Okay, that's it for um, our new business. No unfinished business. Is there presentations? No. Uh, board presentations? Anyone? I was hoping for a speech from the council person, but. <laughs> no speeches. <laughs> We're good. Uh, staff presentations, anything? Chairman Board, I have nothing further for okay. you tonight. Good. Uh, all right. With that, uh, 
We're adjourned at uh, 6.45.